The following is a special presentation of Channel 3 News. Sign our banner. You know where oh, this is okay. going? He's going in the stadium for the last home game. You gonna miss me, bud? Yeah. Are you a football fan? I'm a big Bernie Kosar, Vinny Testaverde fan, but. Oh, I think whoever the scumbag who decided to move him is kind of lame. Of course, if he's the owner, he can do anything he wants. But it's, still, it's not very cool that, that this team's been there for so many years and then he's just up and yanking them to make a few bucks. I mean, he should have a little bit of dignity. They should outlaw football indoors. It was so great when you'd, you'd come up off the ground and you'd have to peel the mud out of your face mask. We used to joke about it, though, a little bit. Some of the guys did. And I think part of it was, I'm talking about those cold days. Uh, some of the guys would kind of look up in the stands and sort of jokingly say, boy, it's so cold. If I were a fan, I'd be home. I've got a question for you. Yeah. Were you ever one of those guys that started to take a snap from the offensive guard? <laughs> yeah. How many times? The, the important thing about lining yourself up behind the offensive guard instead of the, the center to take a snap is that you, when, when you realize it, you got to make sure you make a believable move to dry your hands on the back of his jersey before you <laughs> slip in underneath the center. Then it's okay. Push it up there, Bobo. Roll them. I was yeah. having a moment. I, was having... <laughs> I don't care about your darn moment. That's what get to Get to the game. Sure. Is it hot in there? Oh, no. Never put a dog down. Hello. Hi, Earl. <laughs> hey. How you doing, man? Good. How about yourself? Good to see you. Hi, Brian. Carol. Good. I can't believe it. Good to see you, man. You've been, you've been talked about here. Hey, you got to get this. The ugliest <laughs> hand. <laughs> the ugliest <laughs> hand in pro football. Yeah, it's this guy. Almost. 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 Any thoughts on, uh, on what's happening? Thank you, sir. Well, I just feel that it's so unfair, you know, for such loyal fans. Uh, and I just can't imagine that a financial package would be the, the cause of all this. I, I just think it's greed. Exactly. Uh, personally, um, you know, but now the rest of the population is beginning to see what the players have been dealing with all this time. Hey, nice meeting you. I played football with your dad. He was a great football player. I bet he's a great dad, too, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. Where's Jerry? Where's Jerry? That's amazing. Jerry Sherman. Great to be with all of you. I mean, uh, 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 it, it, doesn't, it doesn't get better than this. Uh, I really appreciate you. Some of you folks are bringing out stuff. We got a 1980s cardiac kid glass. And, uh, we as players took what you fans gave us and we put it out on the field. The tough people from Cleveland, the yeah. people that moved away from Cleveland all over the United States, 
and we stood on your shoulders to become what we became as the Cleveland Browns. Yeah. And we're, we're here to thank you. About, it's about this right here. It's about yeah. me passing it on to my son, you know, and my dad, my dad passing it on to me, and that's what it's about, and that's what all these people are about. Art really Modell bad. was a caretaker, and he screwed up. When I made that call, man, I wanted to freaking kill him, you know? I've got a check right here for $59. That'll buy him a one-way bus ticket to Baltimore. If I were you, Art, I'd buy stock of Maalox, because you're going to need it for your ulcers. I may be a Steelers fan, even though I was born in Cleveland, but Modell is ruining the oldest and the best rivalry known in football. It's really devastating, because it's something we have all believed It's like a marriage or a partnership. And if you don't want to stay there anymore, then he needs to let the team go and go on his own way. Because the Browns are a part of Cleveland. Yeah. I've suffered through mediocre seasons year after year. I sat out in ice bowls, froze to death, watching the Browns play. I've been a loyal fan all these years, and to have something like this happen, it's ripping my heart out. And it's, it's totally, it's the end of the Western civilization as we know it now. Bobo. Bobo, what happened to us in there? I don't know. We were sent back in time. We're kind of at a, at a crossroads in my mind as to whether or not there should uh, professional sports is going to survive. I started seeing a change in the mid 70s and I didn't like it. By the time I got out of football, I came into football night, uh, to the Browns in 1972 and uh, most of the guys on the team still had jobs in the off season. Some of them were still showing up to training camp to get into shape. But all of them had a wonderful attitude about what they were doing and it was still it seemed like it was still part of a more innocent time and i loved that that was the football i grew up playing in fletcher hills california and playing at our lady of grace and grossmont high school you just played for the love of the game and by the time i retired in 1985 something had dramatically changed and so now we're going back to cleveland to, to kind of experience possibly the death of this fantastic uh, franchise and uh, it's it's a bigger story to me it's about professional sports and what I did and how I'm going to deal with it personally I get so excited telling people about what Cleveland has become and not what it was and <clears throat> maybe the story is that what it was was a was a beat up town that nobody spoke well of that had the Cleveland Browns, and now it's something that uh, anybody would be proud of, with or without the Cleveland Browns. And for me personally, when those lights go out in that stadium, and it's no more, that's an event that I need to participate in, for me. It's a way of closing the book. Packers move here? I think so. It says on the map, Meteor City, Browns Packers. We're out here somewhere out of Flagstaff at the NFL's smallest stadium, the Meteor City Dome. It consists of one giant luxury box. Well, the deal is too good to pass up. They got 400 years free rent and uh, all the concessions, and uh, no salary cap either. So you, you had to take the deal. Let us in. It's closed, Bobo. We want some curios now. If I'd known it was closed, we would have flown to Cleveland.
Back in the 70s and 80s, the economy in Cleveland all went to hell. The mills closed down. There weren't many jobs. There was a lot of unemployment. So there was kind of a mass exodus out of Cleveland. People had to leave to, to support their families, to get jobs. They didn't want to leave. They had to leave. And when they left, you know, they left a lot behind. Some of their family, their friends. And one of the things they left behind was the Cleveland Browns. It was one of the things that held everybody together. When they, when they left, they came to Albuquerque, wherever they went. And it's, it, it was one thing. You get together, you talk about Cleveland, you talk about the Browns. And that's why it hurts us so badly, as much as it hurts everybody else in Cleveland. And I can imagine what it's like in Cleveland right now. I really feel for the people that are still living in Cleveland. Uh, last like, October 1st, I flew home and took my parents for their 40th anniversary. My mother had never been to a professional game, so I'm really happy that she was able to see the Cleveland Browns before they left. First year, the Browns were in the NFL. They played Los Angeles Rams at the end of the season for the championship, but essentially would be called the Super Bowl today. And uh, I got a ticket, that's a $1 ticket, to sit in the end zone. My family were sharecroppers. And uh, the farmer brought the first TV set that we'd ever had in, in, in Deming, New Mexico. So I walked into his living room, I said, sit down, he gave me a Pepsi. So I drank the Pepsi, and I walked in the game. And he said, uh, it's the Cleveland Browns that are playing. And I was, I was just uh, mesmerized by the Browns, autogram with the quarterback. And I think they were playing a championship game, and the Browns won. And since that day, I have never stopped being a Browns fan. And I've never been to Cleveland, never been to Ohio. But to me, uh, the, ep the epitome of pro football is the Cleveland Browns. If someone had taken the, uh, the Statue of Liberty out of New York City, you just don't do that. Cleveland is the Browns. Browns are, or they are, the NFL. I can really relate to what's going through the, the hearts and the minds of Cleveland people because it's the same thing that happens to athletes. Athletes come from childhood, a place where they're unsure about themselves and unsure about their identity. And we all are born with little holes in our psyche and that's our job to go out in life and fill them in. And as athletes, we did it with sports. And when you, when you become a professional football player, in some way you've made it, you've got that identity, and you feel good about yourself. Well, this is the same thing that's been happening to Cleveland. Cleveland has come from a place where a lot of negative things have happened. They've had a, a big hole in their psyche, and a big image problem, and a big self-esteem problem. And over the past 20 years, they've turned it around. We hear all over the country from these fans as we come in. They all say the same thing. It's the party line, and it's a true line. It's the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the Indians, the rejuvenation of so many parts of the city. And now, just when they get there, and, and this is what these fans say, just when they get there, the, the crown jewel is stolen, the Cleveland Browns are taken from them. The thing that always said, class to Cleveland, we have class. 
I hate a lot of things about this. I hate that the I hate that the history of the Cleveland Browns won't be there if they move. I hate it that uh, that there's so much anger in the people. Although I don't think that that's necessarily all bad. I think that that's part of that process. I think that people need to be angry. I, I don't think they need to be destructive. I don't think they need to be angry for years. I don't think they need to be angry to where it destroys them. I think after the game, I'll start feeling it. Like, <clears throat> like what, what it really is, which is a death. from Texas and what you may not know is that everything is big in Texas yeah look at our shadows whoa Sh big shadows these are Texas shadows I'm feeling big Bobo oh could we run this up the pole you what you gotta run this up the flagpole the, the football okay I don't want to say they take their football more seriously God or country in Texas, but I pledge allegiance to the NFL. And all the expansion teams around the country, wherever they may roam. Wherever they may roam? <laughs> We're in Texas. <laughs> this That's is Texas. Song. <laughs> and to all their property. For which they get a ton of money. One league under Tagliabue. Very di divisible with injustice for all. Oh, no, now you really did it. Come on, it'll get out. Come on, come on. We want our football, Dad. I gotta have a football. I can't travel without a ball. Football stuck, 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 stuck. I think we're just gonna have to move on. Free. You're never, I mean, it's impossible. He gets all the food concessions, all the merchandising concessions, all the parking, and they've guaranteed you 10 years of sellouts. I mean, it's just, it's just, uh, so I, I, I think the guy would be a, a fool not to move. I think he should leave the Cleveland Browns name in Cleveland. I think if he had to, uh, further brains, he would have sold the name Cleveland Browns to the city of Cleveland, picked up another $100 million. And, and, and that would have been it, you know? I mean, he hasn't done that yet. That surprises me. It really surprises me. Hey, guys. Hey. Hi, guys. Brian Sy. Nice to meet you. Jerry. How are you doing? Brian. How you doing? Brian. How are you doing? Brian. Brian. All right. Yeah, I think the Browns, are getting, the Browns fans are getting shit, you know? The yeah. game used to be personal. We used to really get into it, you know? But, mm. That's, to me, that's what's changed about it. How many teams are there now? What, 28, 26, 28, something like that? 30. 30? Okay. See? <laughs> See, way back when, you know, way back when, when it was just football. You know, and then these big suits and ties and all this stuff. That's the way the Browns are. They're still outside the stadium and all that stuff. And then they dress hardcore for the winter and stuff. And cheer on the Browns, you know, cheer on the dogs and stuff. Here we go. Second chance, second chance. We're a second chance. Oh, man. All right. Thanks, man. Hey, appreciate, appreciate it. your comment. All right, yeah. All right. You have a good time. Well, that's the way I feel. All right. <laughs> Home of the Browns and the Buckeyes.
Check it out, Bobo. Yeah. Looks like we're welcome, too. Ohio welcomes. Put it there, give me the fish. Brian and Jerry. Yeehaw! Martin Mull. Yeah, hey, this is Brian Seid. Brian Seid? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, there was a there was a quarterback of, oh, when, back in the 40s for Cleveland. You? It wasn't the 40s. Okay, well, I remember it was a while ago. It's great to hear from you, too. Yeah, I'm out here at the field kicking. No, I'm not in my car. I'm, I'm doing what I have to do, you know, I'm trying to make the best of a bad situation. I, th I feel horrible, you know. It's I feel orphaned. Who else am I going to root for? The Steelers? So you're out traveling, huh? Hey, I'm on the road to Cleveland, going back for the last ball game. Well, say hi to everybody and tell them, you know, my heart goes with them. Okay, bye-bye. Brian Sipe. Sipe, Sipe. Oh, yeah. No, that's Brian Piccolo. Wait a minute. Brian, Brian Jones, guitar player for the Stones. He's dead. Brian Sipe. Sure, well, he was good. He would have been great if he'd been full size. <laughs> This is wonderful. Appreciate your hospitality. Looks like a few folks in here. Holy cow. How much money does Modell want to keep them in to Cleveland? Keep them in Cleveland. Yeah. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Hall of Fame. This is where all the greats are. Can you believe it, Bobo? I can't wait to see that shoeless Joe Jackson exhibit. And I'm getting tickets for arts induction. I'm you know, those, with you. Those suckers are going to be sold yeah. out. Here we go. No. Wait. No. Wait, what's the time set? Bobo, they're closed. I Bobo, need... everywhere we go, it's closed. Oh, this is a mistake. Curios. Now you want to leave me. Look a little slow today. What, <laughs> <laughs> what a surprise. Isn't that why we came back here? Was to for us personally to have some closure on this thing? You know, I came back to squeeze a tear out of you. How am I doing so far? Not good. First time I saw this place. This round. Well, I'll tell you what, this left an impression on me right here. Right here. I'm kind of feeling it again. 80,000 people in here. Tell hey, you what, when you're 21 years old, and football's been most of your life, and you stand right here for the first time and think that you might play out there, you get a chill. Now, I don't know about you, but there's so much power in this. All the steel, I think of those st steel mills down in the flats down there. That made this stuff? They put it together in 1932. Well, I mean, just the feel of this place is, it's overwhelming. The guy's out here and he's buying a hot dog and he hears that roar of the crowd. He doesn't know if it's a sipe interception or a shirk sack. Well, there sure was a lot more interceptions in your sacks. I'll tell well, you that's that. true. You remember that picture I took from the end zone that I showed you? Yeah. That was r right as my career was ending. Yeah. I felt like I was almost out of this place. You guys were down in the field practicing. I'm with you. I'm going to show you where it is. Head right. Pick them up. Pick them up. Pick hey, this is up. like training camp. Pick them up. Pick them up. Pick them up. Uh, 
Look at the tarps from here. Completely different. Symmetry. You brought me all the way up here for this. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't give it. <laughs> He was born and raised in California. How'd you like to spend every Sunday for 50 years in this seat? You know what? I'd probably want to take it with me if I'd done that. Be etched in your mind, wouldn't it? Might be some hacksaws up here. Come Taking Sunday. a piece of it. <laughs> what if somebody takes, wants just the right piece, and this thing's like a house of cars, and he, all I want is just one piece right here. <laughs> or. Samson and Delilah and all things just go. <laughs> <laughs> what if two, two guys wanted the same piece? They've been looking at it for years or since the announcement. I'm going to take this bar and they both come up here. <laughs> no, it's my bar. It's my bar. Oh. You think of that guy down there, Brian? The last time he'll ever paint that white outline on the B. He will never do that again. I wonder how many times he's done that. I wonder what he was thinking this morning on the way to work. I don't know. Give me a B R O W N S. You know, we got to go down there and talk to those guys. Hey, guys. Hi, guys. How you doing? What's the chance of our getting to shoot one of the numbers? Scotty will let you. My son wishes he could do this. I wish Jerry could see me. She says I won't work. She's got painting at home she wants me to do. Will you tell my wife I actually can paint? Brian did okay with the five, but my dad was a plastering contractor, so I got it in my blood. That's how you paint the field. Is that okay, guys? Yeah, perfect. None of that quarterback light stuff over there. Jeez. In the corner of the end zone, it's the game winner. Green Bay, no time on the clock. Yes! Yes! <laughs> He wins it! The dog pound goes wild! Doug Deacon holding. Let's try it again. A bubble. I'm sorry, but I got a play I've always wanted to run. What play would that be? Well, it's a pass play called Red Right 88. Okay. So you're like an oldie but goodie. You're out here. You probably never heard of that one, have you? No, you're, no, no, you're in close. You're Ozzy. You're in close. Never heard of it. Cost You're me close. Come on. Come on. This is important grand. to me, darn it. Get serious. Last time it cost me 10 grand when you ran Cost's this running place. down. End of the game. Sid. Hut. Oh, my goodness. He ducks Hendricks. Oz, he's over in the back of the end zone. He catches it. The Browns win. We're on our way to San Diego. They can't stop us now. First Monday night game ever. So Howard sat right up there. Probably so. He interviewed Namath before the game. I said, what are you going to do? And Namath said, I'm going to run right at the rookie, Jerry Shirk, number 72. And no matter where they ran that night, there you have it. They're running at the rookie. Oh, that Rasmussen, he's handling Shirk. Joe Willie's plan is just going so well. I was the first goat. <laughs> <laughs> Howard's first goat. Uh, I remember a Monday night game. It was the last game my dad ever saw me play. He was he was terminally ill, and we flew him back here, and we played the Dallas Cowboys here. And I remember just being full of nerves and emotions and, and, and you know, the, the significance of that. And I wasn't sure how the team was going to perform or how I was going to perform. But I remember being on about the 35-yard line, and it was right in the first quarter of the game. We moved the ball at that point, and I was feeling pretty good. But I remember dropping back and eluding uh, a rusher and coming up just in time to see Ozzy getting behind everybody. And I just let it go as far as I could, all 35 yards. <laughs> but that sucker just settled right in his arms as he went in the end zone. And then the first thing you do is you check for flag. Uh, and when they weren't there, my mind went right up into the stands to my dad. That's great. And I said, I think it's going to work out tonight. Uh, we ended up winning that game, too. Yeah. You remember a 49ers game we played here, and it was like one of your first starts or one of the times that you got in yeah. right at first, and it was a real... It wasn't a bad weather game. It, it was, was a bad weather it game. Was, it was a terrible weather game. It was sloppy and cold, and I think, I think they beat us. 
So you and I played really well. Yeah. And for some reason, that moment where you came over the bench and it was probably 25 degrees and rain had turned to snow, and I just grabbed the cape and I, I put it around you. I felt like I was your big brother. You kind of stood there and blew on your hands and you said, thanks, Bobo. I think I meant it. Yeah. We're playing catch on the roof of the stadium. Huh? Yeah. On the roof, baby. It's a moment in time. You know, since I came here in 72, that's a new building, 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 and all the way across. When, we came, when I came here in 72, there was nothing new about this town. Nothing new. Yep. Everything was going so wrong that we came out of the huddle and we were in the wrong formation. I had to call a timeout, so I ran to the sidelines. <laughs> and, they were, and, the, and the crowd was booing us. That's the kind of day we were having. And I was talking to Sam, and uh, just as the, the timeout wasn't quite over, but I was going to go back out to the huddle anyway. So just as I left him and started back out on the field, I, I could, all of a sudden became aware of the booing again. I could hear the booing. And then Sam called me back because he wanted to say something else. I went back and I was talking to Sam and I got quiet again. And all of a sudden it occurred to me that they weren't booing the whole team. So I kind of took two steps out on the field. Here came the boos again. I stepped back off and it stopped. It's like sticking your hand Boo. outside. Oh, that's me. <laughs> ah, it's warm in here. Look at this place. It hasn't changed a bit. Not even a little. Look at... Remember this room? Dr. Greenbaum would be over here, cracking bodies. <laughs> you, always, you always knew that when he was going to crack you, because he'd start talking to you. Well, how are you doing, Brian? <laughs> 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 Leo Murphy on this one. Right here, right here. With the foot. <laughs> With the tape. <laughs> That's too tight, Leo. Tough. Remember this sound, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> you guys got nervous before the game. <laughs> okay, I'm ready, coach. I'm ready. Let me at him. Let me go. Showers. You remember 46 guys trying to get in here at once? Yeah. This was the victory. Victory. Yeah. Yeah, where are you going after the game? <laughs> Here's the losers. Ah, the locker room of all locker rooms. This thing's an antique. They just don't get nicer than this. We shared our lockers with the Indians. This was my locker right here, and it was Rick Manning. Remember him? Yeah, sure. It's a great sound, isn't it? Yeah. I remember walking down this tunnel and feeling so powerful, like a warrior ready to go. I remember walking down this tunnel and feeling like a deer cut in the headlights of a truck. <laughs> By a warrior ready to go. <laughs> uh, no, nah, this was an emotional experience. This is when you started to uh, hear it. <sighs> There's a big white light here. Uh, I remember I used to like to sit up here like this and the fans would be trying to look in from the sides i'd just sit here and everybody would be walking around walking around well did we win or lose Bob? yeah we won hey yeah, yeah. Hey. all right in 1950 i think it was sort of like turn the light on uh, the crowd was starting to really get involved in the the emotion of the uh, events and uh, we, we end up developing a, a really a great following and of course uh, through the years the crowd expanded and uh, there was nothing to play before full houses. If you trash the tradition of the Browns, if you give up all of those things that the Browns have stood for for some 50 years, then you're given, giving up all that I have contributed and all that 
the former Browns have confirmed it. We're going to begin, and we used to take the train from East 55th Street to Pittsburgh. We'd eat all the food on the club car then. And on the way back, uh, the Polka King, uh, Frankie Yankovic, used to meet us with his Polka band at East 55th Street. When we got off the train, there'd be like five, ten thousand people milling around there. Otto Graham had the same locker as me, and actually, Brian, you did too. That was something that definitely uh, we thought about, and, uh, you know, it made you feel good. It made you feel, you know, it was an honor for me to be, uh, to be a quarterback there, to play in that stadium, uh, the way the fans and the people embrace that team. That particular day when my helmet flew off, it didn't fly off. Somebody knocked it off. They were chopping at me with their elbows, standing up rather than getting in front of me. They were swinging them elbows from the side, and finally somebody caught me and hit the helmet and knocked the helmet off. Well, that just didn't slow me. That slowed me down until I got my balance and I went on for the touchdown. When I did my book tour and and we set records in Ohio, and it was the first time I understood fans, because grandparents came out, and fathers and sons, and fathers and daughters, and mothers and daughters, and they all had the same experience in that stadium. And they were appreciative of me, so they came out to buy my book. And he, I would look each and every one of them in the eye, and I saw an honesty. I saw that they were totally sincere about their relationships, with the Cleveland Browns and their relationship with me. My son will grow up probably not knowing about Cleveland Stadium as I know it. And, you know, that, that has uh, some type of an effect on me. But, uh, you know, for 18 years now, 13 as a player and five for, you know, being on the other side of the fence, my life has been centered around what went on at that stadium. to sing from all the fat cats doing their thing they like to keep us all jumping like a bunch of frogs meanwhile my dream is going to the dogs blue collar got no green all I'm getting from the big machine is you ain't no Buddy, here we go. This, this, this. Yes! Go to the you know, this one today is very important. You're going to remember this all your life. Don't leave nothing for people like you and me. Living in the home of the brave. And the so called land of the free. Yeah. Art, you're breaking our hearts, man. That's all there is to it. Coming in here today, I felt like it was like a funeral, you know, like one of my family members died. So it's going to be hard, you know, but we'll pick it up and we'll keep going. This is disappointing. Uh, I, actually, I hate this whole fact that the Browns are, go are going. I hope that maybe the Cleveland Browns name stays, but it sounds like it's going to go now. But I've been here since I was nine years old, Jerry. That was when my brother played in 46. 
with the original brown. It's, it's tough to pick. Not a better setting for football. It's uh, it's old, it's cold, it's, uh, but it, the teams came here. They knew that it was special because the fans. This was Cleveland, and this represented Cleveland, and uh, they never replaced it. on a day like today, Dick? I'm, uh, I'm getting overwhelmed with emotion. It's, uh, I didn't think I'd get this way, but uh, you know, as I see the, uh, the clock wind down, and uh, you know, it's, it's like a New Year's Eve, but uh, you know, there's going to be no next year. I think there'll be a lot of great stories that, that uh, dads are going to be telling their daughters about this day and about this team and about the 50 years that they played football here. And um, I've learned, uh, having been retired now for some time, that sometimes the uh, the memories are even are even better than reality. So uh, I guess my hope is that we have some great memories as a result of all this. pretty amazing down there today. It was unbelievable. I guess I never thought I'd see a town love a team so much. Today a guy asked me if Cleveland could recover from this. You know what I told him? Always has, always will. Yeah, Brian. No, no. No, you're not bothering me at all this time. I'm glad you called. I tell you, I've never been better. My leg is strong. I'm hitting from all over the field. I, I, I... You're kidding. So, so it's, it's over. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Bye.